Hey everyone, Sam Davidson here with MEA Worldwide, and today we are going to be talking about the new HBO Sports documentary, Well Groomed. I am sitting here, of course, with the director. Here we have Rebecca Stern, so nice to meet you, and um, Kat Opson, who is one of the groomers and one of the stars of this really, really fun and fascinating documentary. Thanks for having me today. And um, well, of course, we have Inspiration right here and Zealand. Yeah. These are the real stars of the show. <laughs> so uh, Rebecca, tell me a little bit about what drew you to this project and this story specifically. Yeah, I mean, once you see a picture of creative dog grooming, that's like kind of enough to draw you in. But really, I just wanted, I wanted to make a film that had joy at the basis of it. Mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to focus on women, and I wanted to focus on art. And this is the confluence of all of them. So yeah. I, could, I got really lucky. Um, and I got to hang out with Kat. Yeah. Well, how did you guys meet, and how did you find her? So when I was first starting Well Groomed, I um, went to a few gr grooming competition shows, kind of just to try to jump in. Um, and it was my very first feature film, or it was my very first film. It was actually a short at the time before it became a feature. And so I didn't entirely know what I was doing, so I figured I would just show up and see what would happen. Um, and Kat and I met, and she was kind enough to give me a few minutes of her time asking a few questions. Um, and that's how the relationship started, and that was about five years ago. Wow. Yeah. And so has anyone before ever taken a real interest in, in what you do and, you know, spinning it in a positive way before? Um, there's been a lot of interest, and there's been a few people that have actually made uh, features about it. Um, and that's probably why initially when she approached me, I was a little bit hesitant, just because some people have presented it in not the best way that we wanted. Um, so we were all a little anxious at first, but it became clear through the types of questions she was asking that mm -hmm. she was going to ask, she was going to tell the story how it was and not make anything out of it that it wasn't. So how did you get into this line of work and how long has this line of work been around for? Um, creative grooming has been around since the 90s and I started regular grooming 23 years ago and about... 12 years into grooming, I decided I was bored with it and I wanted to do hair. And then I got a cosmetology license. Didn't really like doing that either. So I decided I loved the dogs more than people. So <laughs> I took all the color training I learned at cosmetology school and applied it to my career as a dog groomer and started creative dog grooming in 2009. And so are these your dogs and all of the dogs that have been in the competitions and things, are they yours? Are they other people's? How do you kind of make that match and find them? Um, I personally have only ever used my own dogs uh, because it does require a lot of time and you know we're kind of working on it in off hours when we're not at work. Mm -hmm. um, but I know other girls have used other people's dogs. Usually you can borrow them from another groomer that has a nice white fluffy poodle that they'll let you borrow. Um, people rent dogs sometimes. Um, there's whole Facebook pages for renting dogs. Wow. <laughs> it's kind of a whole world that you know, you wouldn't know was there. But I personally use my own dogs, and I just take into consideration the dog's personality. Is it something that they're going to enjoy? And is it something that they can physically handle? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I know there's, of course, a lot of controversy that does surround a topic like this because people love animals so, so much. And so how is your spin as a director on the film and, and your opinion about the subject, um, you know, helping what, what Kat here does? Well, I mean, first off, I spent five years f making this film, and I never saw any dog that was, like, in distress. Mm -hmm. So there wasn't really an angle to go towards um, in creating something else. I think a lot of the other pieces were done in more of a reality s sense, whereas, like, this is a documentary. Um, and I wasn't looking to manufacture anything that wasn't necessarily there. Um, in terms of the... Sorry, what was the rest of the question? Um, and, you know, how are you really kind of highlighting it in a very positive way what Kat does here? Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, it is their art. And so, and it is an intense bonding experience with the dogs, between the women and, and the animals. And so I really focused um, oftentimes in the film on exactly that. So you, you really see the women spending a ton of time with their dogs. You see the entire process of grooming from beginning to end. You see people kind of considering or wondering what they would want to have make what they want in the um, in like their art piece and how to make it better. Um, and then you'd spend a lot of time just like looking at mm -hmm. beautiful, beautiful works of art that happen to be dogs. Yeah. And I know that obviously you are an animal lover through and through, and it must be difficult sometimes to get 
some of the comments and the backlash that, you know, I, you know, I did my research and I watched the doc. And so it's interesting sometimes what people have to say. Um, how do you deal with that and kind of justify, you know, what you're doing to really get people to understand that this is a fun, positive thing that, you know, you love and the dogs love? Um, so <laughs> she's like, I haven't been in on that. Um, in the beginning, <laughs> in the beginning when I would read, you know, negative comments, it would really, do you want to sit? It would really bother me and I would respond kind of angrily, but I learned over time that that doesn't do anybody any good. Mm -hmm. So I try to just explain kindly that, you know, we use products that are safe, that we take into consideration the personality of the dog, whether or not they would appreciate it or not. And then at that point, if they still have that opinion, then I allow them to have that opinion. You know, I, I've learned to be okay with other people not knowing my side of the story or understanding it, you know. And so for people watching this interview that are curious, what are the kinds of things that you're using as far as, you know, chemicals, non-chemicals to make sure that um, it's safe for the animal? Um, so we use only deposit dyes. There's no lifting agent, no peroxide, no ammonia. Um, they're cruelty-free, vegan, like they wash out, um, grow out. They're Usually we do some kind of a patch test. I always do a patch test on the inside of the thigh, make sure the dog won't have a reaction to it. And then um, most of them are like flower plant-based dyes. Mm -hmm. And so have you ever had an experience with a dog where you're like, you know what, she's not, he's not into this. Let's, you know, maybe take a break or find another animal that, you know, really is a ham like this one over here, even though she's hiding behind the chair. Not true. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, I... I actually have retired several of my dogs as they've gotten a little bit older and I could read their expressions and I could understand that they weren't really happy about getting onto the table and spending that much time. So I love my dogs just like they're my children. So I, I definitely pay attention to those things. And when I can see that it's becoming too much for them, I just let them and so what are you hoping um, as a filmmaker that people are going to take away from this film? And I mean, do you think perhaps you're going to get more people interested in this line of work? I mean, yeah, I think people are, the interest in this is growing for sure. Um, in terms of what I want to get out of it, you know, I, I'm a documentary producer um, and then this is my first time directing and I've made a lot of films that are very important, but also very dark. And so Well Groomed was my foray into like comedy and lightness and joy. And there's really a joy and an effervescent at the heart of the film. So I want people to allow this to like make their day a little bit better. And then also just to be a little bit more creative in their own, in their own life. Um, you know, there's so many opportunities for all of us to show a little bit of our creativity mm -hmm. and we should take them when they're presented. Absolutely. And is this your full time gig? Do you do anything on the side for a living or is this, you know, all that you do 100% of the time? I full-time work as a groomer. Um, we don't full-time do creative grooming, mm -hmm. um, but I own my own grooming shop. I've owned it for 19 and a half years, and um, I work there all the time. The only free time I have, I spend with my dog <laughs> <laughs> or my horse. <laughs> And I mean, this is an industry that is extremely unique and you were around it for five years. Do you have any fun, interesting little story that you could share with us that um, either really touched your heart or made you laugh that you think about a lot when you think about this journey? Oh man, I mean, they're all just moments between the women and their dogs, right? Like they, there's so many tender moments of just like people sitting down at the end of the day and like having the dog drape themselves across their, across their knees and just spending the time. Um, I think during that time I did also get a dog. So now I know a little bit more about dogs and dog grooming um, and dog training. So like that was a big learn and walk away. Yeah. There's so much hilarity in the film and in making the film, but people can watch it and they can laugh along. <laughs> Most of it got into the final cut. Yeah. <laughs> So what is next for you um, after this film comes out? I mean, I know it was out at South by Southwest, but HBO Sports specifically is such a huge platform. So what are you hoping from it? Um, I'm just hoping to bring attention to it in a positive way so that people, because I feel like a lot of the people who have a negative reaction to it just don't understand, like they don't know enough about it. And I really feel like if you watch the film, 
you'll see that it's not it's not about us as a groomer. It's not about getting attention. Um, in fact, most of us don't really like a lot of like attention on us. Um, it's more about just our love of art and our love of dogs and combining the two things together. So I just really hope that when people see the film that they will um, appreciate that and gather that from it. And so I just am very grateful that HBO has given it such a big platform. Well, thank you guys so much for chatting with me. The film is so much fun and definitely um, an interesting industry that not a lot of people know about. So everyone, please make sure you guys tune in to the premiere on HBO of Well Groomed, which is going to be at 9 p.m. on December 17th. And thank you guys so much. And thank you, too. And there's a third one on the floor, too. So <laughs> we'll see you next time. Thanks, everyone. Bye.